Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a signum equation. We've done a signum equation a while ago, and I just thought it might be a good idea to revisit the signum function or the sine function. I'm going to go ahead and define what it is for you, and then we'll proceed with the solution. So a signum or sine function is basically, and not to be confused with the trigonometric sine, which is SIN or SINE, the sine function is defined as follows. So if you have the sine of A, let's say, it is defined as the following. If A is positive, it's equal to 1. If A is negative, then the sine of A, or signum of A, is equal to negative 1. And if A is equal to 0, then the signum of A is equal to 0. So that's pretty much what the definition is. And let me tell you something about the signum function, which is pretty interesting. Signum of A can be written as A divided by the absolute value of A as long as A does not equal 0. Of course, when A is equal to 0, it's 0, so you can kind of define it in a different way as a piecewise function. Okay, so that is related to the absolute value, so that means you can absolutely turn this into an absolute value equation, but we're going to follow the signum path. So how do you solve these kinds of equations? You're going to look at three different cases, all right? So what are they? I'm going to be checking this expression right here, x squared minus 4x plus 1. That is my expression, and I want it to be positive first. When is this positive? And what happens if it's positive? Let's go ahead and take a look. If my expression inside the signum is positive, then the result is 1. So from here, this implies that 1 minus 2x is equal to 1, and that means that x is equal to 0. Now here's one thing you can do. You don't have to solve this quadratic inequality because the right-hand side gives you a numerical value and you can just go ahead and plug it in and check the answer. But I'll also show you another approach using inequalities. Maybe I should do that first because it seems to be more complicated, but that doesn't matter. Okay, so x equals 0, does that satisfy our inequality? Because it has to, right? If you plug in 0 here, you get 0 minus 0 plus 1 is greater than 0, and that is true, right? Obviously, 1 is greater than 0, so x equals 0 is a valid solution. So we're going to pick that. Great. So that was my first case. Let's go ahead and look at it case by case. The second case is, I want this to be negative. Okay, great. Then, what is that supposed to mean? That means whatever is inside the signum function is negative. In that case, the result would be negative 1. So the signum would output negative 1. So that means 1 minus 2x is equal to negative 1, which means 2x is equal to 2, which means x equals 1. Now, does this satisfy the original inequality? Let's go ahead and check. If you replace x with 1, you get 1 minus 4 plus 1, which is equal to a negative number. So this is also satisfied, which means x equals 1 is also a valid, valid solution. Great, so far so good. Let's go ahead and check the third case scenario, which is the zero case, which should be fairly easy because you're going to get a really numerical, good numerical value from here. Now, if the inside of the signum function is equal to zero or it is zero, then the right-hand side, the output will be zero, which means that I'm supposed to look at one minus x being zero, but this means x equals one half. And as you know, one half is not the root of this because this equation has radical solutions. So this is unfortunately not going to work. So those are my valid solutions. So I can write the solution set as zero and one to this signum equation. So should we quickly look at the second method because you, you might find it somewhat interesting. I don't want to keep it too long, but I don't want to rush and make mistakes either. So let's take our time. So with the second method, here's what we're going to be looking at. I have the x squared minus 4x plus 1. And I obviously, I can take this. Uh, this can take three different values. So this is equal to 1 minus 2x, as you know from my expression. And I'm asking this type of question. What happens, and again, case by case, what happens if this is positive? Well, we can just go ahead and factor this expression or use the quadratic formula, but I would do the following. I would just write this as x squared minus 4x plus 1 is equal to 0, and then x squared. Actually, I could probably do the following without setting it equal to 0. Let me go ahead and do this. I can write this as x squared minus 4x plus 4 minus 3, and this is x minus 2 quantity squared minus 3, and I want this to be positive. Now, what is that supposed to mean? 
it means that x minus 2 quantity squared is greater than 3. If you take the square root of both sides, remember, you got to use the absolute value and you get the following. And this just means that you get two solutions because you have to split them up like this and like that. You know, with the absolute value, when you have greater than, you have to split it up into two pieces that are separate. This is going to be x is greater than root 3 plus 2, and this is going to be x is less than 2 minus root 3. Maybe I should write it as 2 plus root 3, so they kind of look, uh, you know, uh, what's it called? The word is conjugate. Okay, that's what I was looking for. So what is that supposed to mean? Uh, it means that x needs to be in that interval. In that case, we're going to get a solution. But from here, if you, if you uh, use the fact that 1 minus 2x is equal to 0 from, oops, it's not supposed to be 0. It's supposed to be 1. And from here, we get x equals 0. Now, here's the question you need to ask. Is 0 on this interval? So you can, you can kind of make a number line. 2 minus root 3 will be here. 2 plus root 3 will be here. Now, my solution uh, to this inequality basically tells me that, okay, your solutions are going to be in this interval or on this interval. Well, x equals 0 obviously is going to be on the, because both of these are positive, x equals 0 is going to fall here. Therefore, it is a valid solution. So if I go ahead and proceed with the same idea, I should be finding valid solutions. But this was just my first case. But the second case should be easier because we already have the solutions to this inequality. But this time, we're going to set it less than 0, which means that the x minus 2 quantity squared is going to be less than 3. Now, this inequality can be solved with absolute value again. But this time, you kind of have to squeeze it between two numbers because it's less than. So I can safely say that the solutions are going to look like this. And then adding 2 to everything, x must be between negative 2 minus root 3 and 2 plus root 3. And now, since my expression inside the signum function is negative, the output is going to be negative 1. And 1 minus 2x is supposed to be negative 1. From here, we get 2x is equal to 2, which means x equals 1. And obviously, 2 minus root 3 is going to be like 2 minus 0. Um, well, actually not 0. 1.7 ish. So this is like 0. 0.3 ish. And this is going to be like 2 plus 1.7 ish, 3.7 ish. Obviously, my 1 is going to be in between. So it's also a valid solution. Now, last case, we're going to be looking at this being equal to 0. And now you're going to get the following from here. x is going to be either 2 minus root 3, because we already know the roots to that quadratic, or x plus 2 root 3. But when you set 1 minus 2x equal to, equal to 0, because you have 0 inside the signum, this is going to give you x equals 1 half. And that is a contradiction because it doesn't fit what we found from the other ones. Therefore, we only have two valid solutions, 0 and 1. And this brings us to the end of the second solution. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.